Um, what should we now call on David Boylan, please, again. Welcome back, Huey. <laughs> I thought this year that everyone would have a poem about recession. So I said I wouldn't write one. So I decided I'd write about people who might want to move away from Bannerhurt and they might take a second look and change their mind. They say that travel broadens the mind, you'll hear it up and down. But the mind can find education in the characters of a town. Now I've never been to China, Pakistan or Passage West, but to venture through the hometown is the journey I like the best. I bought screws from Kieran Coakley, bought loose and by the pound, and a tracksuit from Lorna Hogan in the sports shop up the town. I drank rabbit soup in Allen's, in between the pints of stout, while Lolly loaded up the dogs and Biddy given out. <laughs> Snooker down the West End with Paddy Kenny and Jared Lynn, while Tom Flynn crunched bags of, la crunched bags of glossy sweets, creating an awful din. While Simon supplied the bacon, I sliced rashers and I boned ham, and Tom Dempsey gave the orders when he filled up the van. I remember Father John McNally calling into the school when he was home, and how fierce important I always felt, because he was one of our own. Oh, and on a Christmas morning, singing songs and telling yarns, while the adults sweat their whistles in the home of Peter Barnes, I drank tea in Ballyector, came in the door around the back, had brown bread with loads of butter and a word with Kitty Mac. Oh, and on Poland's day at election time, checking lists and drinking tea with banter, tales and stories from that eat a kill -a I remember one Christmas Eve, Mick Corrigan delivering drink, a wooden box of bottles, and he threw in a bottle opener, I think. Quigley's and green school anoraks, all oh, the colour made me sick. And Ev pulled up the zipper and said, ah, it's perfect for you, Vic. <laughs> I talked horses with Jim Reynolds, watching racing on TV, discussing who's the greatest. Was it Piggott or Eddery? Bank holiday Monday evenings by the fire in Simmy's bar, singing songs with Mikey Hinchy. Joe Kendi was never that far. I rolled around with laughter at Billy Burke's verse and jargon. I watched Peter Wynne's gentle hand bring magic to a garden. As a boy, the finest toy I had was a barrow made of timber, made by the kind and gifted hands of Harry Johnson, I remember. I stacked shelves in Jackie Rylands with Maureen at the till. Is our, is our Bobby in Burr golfing? I can still hear Jackie roaring still. <laughs> I marveled down in Johnny Hawks at the doll with dancing feet and boxcar's battered knuckles as the timber he would beat. I saw turf fall on the main road from Charlie Daly's cast and art. I queued for fizzle sticks and sherbet in Mulhairs just after mass. I enjoyed the subtle tone and verse of a Paddy Tully poem. It was often ringing in my ears as I uphill shuffled home. I bought mouse trap spoons and woolly socks when often I'd call in for the press or independent in the home of Seamus Flynn. On Sunday mornings, bright and early at the house of Little Gable, I'd watch before the collection while Kieran Foley pulled out the table. And when the TV wasn't working to Jimmy Kendi's we would rush, she'd always sort you with something, could be a Phillips or a Bush. <laughs> Mrs. Peter sold his ice cream with jelly beans in a can. I remember old Jack Madden and the dog called Dandy Man. At the September fair on our main street, there was always fun and games. I often stood with the grand grey mare belonging to Michael James. Oh, and the first time I saw magic was up at the primary school. Dennis Lynch could make his thumb disappear and we all thought it was cool. <laughs> of the moon's bright silvery light I heard from the songs of Paddy Kelly. I got parcels, cards and letters from the postman old Dan Shelley. I bought Beano, Shoot and Dandy from newsagent Paddy Flynn. I heard Seeny Madden whistle as he pushed his wheelie bin. I've heard too true a million times by the twin while holding rank. <laughs> Twas always Mick that said it, not forgetting brother Frank. <laughs> While Mulvey, while Mulvey cured the animals, Dalton gave the pills. The healing hands of medicine, brought to us by those two bills. 
Pocky Flynn would fill your glass up with whiskey, ale or stout and he'd pick you up and dust you off if you had to be laid out. <laughs> I heard tunes from Devery's squeeze box of the likes you'll hear no more. But when he took to laughing, jeez, he'd have you in the snores. <laughs> so with your passport in your pocket and your suitcase in the hall, God bless you on your journey, young people one and all. Take care, be kind and honest. And will you sing a happy song? But remember all the natives in this place from which you're from.